Welcome back to the Big Spiderbeck Museum for the final installment of our video tour. And welcome again to where we began, the legacy of Bix in the 21st century. Today we say goodbye to Bix's life story by looking at the legacy he left behind. In 1931, Robin's Music published sheet music for Bix's In a Mist, which longtime friend Bill Chalice had edited. Bix signed a copy for him with a short message. To Bill, here's to memories of marvelous times. May they be long-lived. Sincerely, Bix Spiderbeck. Bix could not have guessed how that hope would play out. The summer of 2021 will be the 90th anniversary of his death, and despite the many decades, his memory and the sound of his horn continues to live on. Though his own career was short and his direct influence on jazz ended with it, his effect lived on through numerous jazz musicians who were blessed with far longer careers. Some were influenced by having recorded with him, such as Benny Goodman, a clarinet player who met Bix at the tender age of 14, at the beginning of Bix's career, and recorded with him in 1930. Other such musicians include Gene Krupta, Jimmy and Tommy Dorsey, Fats Waller, and Duke Ellington. He also influenced musicians such as Artie Shaw, a clarinetist and eventual star of the big band era, and Bobby Hackett, who is renowned for his Bixian purity of tone and melodic invention. Even though they never played together publicly, nor got to record together, Louis Armstrong, arguably the most famous of Bix's friends, had admired Bix for both his abilities and for his character. Bix's old colleagues and friends found a variety of ways to remember and pay tribute to him. Paul Whiteman had his photo taken leaving a large bouquet of flowers at the Biderbeck family grave nearly 10 years after Bix had passed. Others, such as Eddie Condon, kept the legend of Bix alive by telling his story, often memorializing him within the various jazz clubs he ran, such as with the mural here. Old friends came to his grave to play music when they were younger, and then simply came to pay their respects when they were older, such as when Paul Mertz, Stanley Doc Riker, Bill Chalice, and Bill Rank visited his gravesite in 1973. Another way his fellow musicians found to pay their respects was playing at an annual summer event here in Davenport, the Big Spiderbeck Memorial Jazz Festival, often just called Bix Fest. One such longtime guest at Bix Fest was Spiegel Wilcox, a trombonist who had once had the pleasure of knowing and playing with Bix in the Goldcat Orchestra and who had returned to jazz music in his retirement decades later. He played at Bix Fest numerous times in the 1970s and 1980s. To commemorate his appearances in 1996, he signed the stool that now sits by the Hudson Lake stage further into the museum. Beyond Bix's old friends and acquaintances, he was also honored with a number of posthumous awards and inductions. Two of his recordings, Singing the Blues and In a Mist, were inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 1977 and 1980. He was also inducted into the Lincoln Center's Jazz Hall of Fame in 2004. Awards for each of these posthumous honors are displayed here. Among other honors include two statues in Davenport, one dedicated in 1979 and another in 2000, his recording of Singing the Blues being placed on the U.S. Library of Congress National Recording Registry, and of course, our own museum and archive dedicated to Bix, his colleagues, and their vital contributions to American music. The real test of time for Bix, however, would be the popularity of his music. His short career ended 90 years ago. His instrument of choice even fell out of favor for the trumpet. It would all contribute easily to Bix being a long forgotten gem of the jazz age. But although Bix's legacy may be much shorter than others, he has been remembered in some stunning and crucial ways. When we began this tour, we highlighted the wall of records you see again now. Bix made no recordings after 1930, and yet his songs are still sold, even internationally. We have records that were produced and sold in Spain, Germany, and even Japan. There are compilation records and, even more inspiring, tribute albums. To this day, there are still people who so enjoy Bix's music that they've played it themselves. To take it one step further, 
there is the use of Bix's music in film and on stage. Near our front doors, we've displayed a number of posters for Hollywood films and Broadway musicals. Each have Bix on their soundtracks, and a notable few star characters inspired by his life and talents. Bix's recordings are so synonymous with the time period that they have been used in the soundtracks for The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Magic in the Moonlight, and Bullets Over Broadway. To be immortalized in film and on stage is a legacy all on its own. Though Bix died in 1931, it did not end his story, and we here at the Bix Spiderbeck Museum and World Archives work so that, in a way, it never will. Thank you for joining us on this video tour of our permanent gallery, where Bix lives.